The new season of Chicago Med is just around the corner and we can't wait to see our favorite characters again. Well, at least those who stayed in the show. Let's find out how the actors trained hard to play their roles. We've really done our training, we've really put our work in there. Which talent of Tori DeVito's made its way into a Chicago Med episode? And why did Yaya da Costa struggle before joining the cast? On screen and real life MDs. The attention to detail is that much more of a challenge for these guys. They intubate their patients, do CPR, and perform many other medical tasks in every single episode. There's so much medical stuff that it's impossible to script it all without the actors actually doing the procedures. So, yeah, they had to learn everything. Before the filming began, all the Chicago Med actors received practice kits along with instructions on how to use them. And then they had to hone their skills at home. So, in just a matter of days, the cast received enough information to translate into 10 years of medical practice. Isn't that huge? And if you think that the surgery scenes in Chicago Med are all too real, that's because many of the tools are. And it's really expensive. That's right. They use actual tools to operate on the prosthetics to make everything look as real as possible. An actor lies underneath a prosthetic torso created by a special effects team. And some of these prosthetics look a little too real. What's more, to ensure that even the smallest details are in place, the Chicago Med crew has real-life doctors and nurses on the set. These people mostly stay behind the scenes but occasionally appear as extras in the series. And at least for one of the cast members, being able to communicate with them meant a lot. Nick Galfus, who plays Dr. Halstead, shared that doctors have always inspired him, so playing one has certainly been exciting for him. But, of course, not everything these guys deal with on the screen is real. Blood, for example, is always fake. It's made of corn syrup and some red dye. That's all over. Like, there's a lot of blood and lube. You see a lot of it in the series, but you can never tell, right? And here's one more thing that you've never noticed. What's in a name? We rarely pay attention to the episode titles when we watch a show, but when it comes to Chicago Med, it's actually worth noticing because of how fascinating they are and how they get better every year. All episodes in Season 1 had one-word titles such as Fallback, Reunion, or Intervention. In Season 2, they had two words – Inherent Bias, Lose Yourself, Love Hurts… You can see the pattern, right? It's not a quirk or a fan theory because if you look at all of the titles, you'll see that the amount of words in them always corresponds with the season number. Season 6 had the longest title so far with six words in them. We bet the Chicago Med writers may start wanting to end the series soon because I can't imagine them coming up with longer and longer names for the future seasons. But what if this tradition has some kind of significance that we're yet to see? Let's hope so, because too long titles are not really practical. For now, the hidden meaning remains a mystery. But what's not a mystery is the relationship between two particular cast members. Behind the Scenes Love Welcome to our world. Colin Donnell, who plays Dr. Connor Rhodes, is married to his Chicago Med co-star in real life. It's Patty Murin, aka Dr. Nina Shaw, a recurring character in the medical drama. They met before the series even began. In 2013, Colin and Patty co-starred in a musical adaptation of Shakespeare's play Love's Labour's Lost. After that, they never separated. The actors had a not-too-big wedding ceremony six years ago and welcomed their daughter last year. Interestingly, Colin and Patty have never played each other's love interests, despite being together for all these years and working on the same set together a few times. And they're pretty happy about it. It works for us, especially now with a child, because then it's either he's working or I'm working," Murin commented. And she jokingly added that they like it that they don't have to spend 24-7 together because this way they definitely won't get sick of each other. But since these two look so lovely together in real life, it'd still be cool to see them as an on-screen couple at least once. So fingers crossed! And let's proceed to the next Chicago Med fact. A major character we never saw. Did you know that The Walking Dead actress Laurie Holden initially joined the medical drama's cast? She was supposed to play Dr. Hannah Tramble, who was the main heroine of the show in the first version of the script. But at the last moment, the actress quit. The reason why was never fully explained. We only know that Holden left due to personal reasons. And at least she got to appear in the pilot episode of the series. 
Interestingly, instead of keeping her heroine and just recasting Holden, the writers came up with as many as three different female characters to replace her. That's how we got the emergency pediatrician Dr. Natalie Manning, charge nurse Maggie Lockwood, and young resident Dr. Sarah Reese. And while we keep on wondering how the show would look with Holden's character in it, let's talk about one of these heroines. Tori DeVito's Additional Talent Remember how Dr. Manning played the violin in the first season's episode Fallback? She did it along with a patient, a violinist who needed surgery that could lead to hearing loss. Nat explained to her that even if she lost her hearing, she could still play because her body would remember how to do it. <laughs> You've probably wondered who really played the violin in that scene, because it seems like there's no way the actress could actually do that, right? But in fact, it was Tori DeVito herself who delivered that beautiful performance. The actress has played the violin since she was six and has had her share of awesome gigs in the past. She performed with the Tommy Davidson Band at the Sunset Room in Hollywood and played at Christy Brinkley's wedding when she was just 12. Tori even considered becoming a professional musician. But acting turned out to be a more interesting career for her. Now that DeVito is out of the Chicago Med series, we expect her to show us other sides of her talent and play even more complex roles in other projects. Meanwhile, let's move on to another actress who also recently left the series. Yaya da Costa and her awesome hair. She's fine. It was always cool to see April rocking her natural curls in the show. After all, more often than not, black actresses are required to straighten their hair for roles or change it somehow. Yaya da Costa had to do it more than once in the past. The actress had to press her hair every single day before coming to the set, and she even went blonde for one of her roles. Eventually, it took its toll, and all these practices caused breakage and led to severe hair loss. Thankfully, da Costa managed to treat her hair and let it recover. And while she was in Chicago Med, Yaya was happy to wear her natural curly style because the crew didn't mind at all. It's definitely refreshing, she commented. I just feel so blessed to be with such a talented and knowledgeable crew. And the actress added that it helped her relax while her hair and the makeup team did their job because she didn't have to worry that they'd leave the iron in there for too long. Yeah, that actually happened to her in the past and led to a huge chunk of her hair getting stuck inside the iron. Yikes! Thank God she got to give her hair a break. We'll soon get to see da Costa as a lead character in the new series, Our Kind of People, so let's hope that she'll get to show off her natural hair there, too. And now, let's find out what the exit of two critical characters means for the future of Chicago Med. All the cast changes We're definitely going to see a new female lead in Season 7. It'll probably be Dr. Stevie Hammer, played by the Being Human and Condor actress Kristen Hager. Her role is described as a brilliant and scrappy emergency room attending physician. And that's pretty much all we know about her for now. Another new addition to the Chicago Med cast will be Guy Lockhart as Dr. Dylan Scott. His brief backstory tells us that he left his career as a police officer to become a doctor. But it's still unclear if he has any connection to Chicago PD, another show in the Chicago franchise. And the most controversial addition to the main cast is Dr. Dean Archer. Played by Steven Weber, he has a recurring character in the sixth season, and not the most lovable one, to say the least. He's power-hungry, and he even tried to displace fan favorite Dr. Ethan Choi in the past. Does this mean that the emergency department is going to have its own villain starting from season 7? Or does Dr. Archer deserve the benefit of the doubt and a chance to show his better side? We're going to find out soon. If you want to know more about Chicago Med, watch this video to learn the real reason why Tori DeVito and Yaya DaCosta left the medical drama's cast. And stay awesome!